Podcast with your hosts, Steve Dangle, Adam Wilde, and Jesse Blake. You know, I was going to start today with an apology, but let's talk about how Steve Dangle of the Steve Dangle Podcast, the Steve Dangle Podcast, T-S-D-P, uh, was uh, forgot that he had a show or forgot how long walks are with his dog that's been around for how old is Iggy? Five now? Six. Six. Just turned okay. six. So we yeah, had no, we the normally, second one. We normally record at about two o'clock. It's 222 right now. And w- so what happened, Steve? You, you messaged us. You said, I'm sorry, I got caught on a walk. <laughs> so we're we're uh, we're getting some work done in the backyard right now because it's one of the very few legal things remaining. Right. And uh we, so we can't let Iggy out. Can't let him outside. Um, if we did, he'd be in a construction site. And if he actually managed to get onto the grass, there would be a nest of bunnies. Um, so just a minefield back there. Uh, so I got to take him on walks every time. Um, every time. And I'm like, you know what? I'm an old man. I know I'm about to be sitting for about two hours with my buds. Don't want to stiffen up there. Don't want to have any disc issues. Get the QLs tightening up there. Heaven forbid the piriformis syndrome. Oh, who knows about that? High five, Damn, fellow olds. I have no idea what that is. Yeah. So no. I uh, I went for a walk and <laughs> looked at my phone and was not near my house and realized it was two o'clock <laughs> and just made a mistake. All right. <laughs> not smart. I better not be late when I'm on uh, Tim and Friends tomorrow. Yeah, you've got two two uh, segments with them coming tomorrow. Yeah, so it's floating um, right now. We don't know. We have a potential guest. Uh, I'm not going to say who it is, just in case they can't. But mm-hmm. uh, right now, unless something very major breaks, I'm supposed to do two blocks with Tim. I don't know which blocks. So uh, follow my Twitter, and I'll let you know. That's fun. Yeah. I think it'll be very fun. I've never never been on with Tim. Mm. Only Sid. Mm. Yeah, because every time beach. Tim's been away, you've been the fill-in for Tim. Yeah. yeah. Once cool. <laughs> on a football heavy day with no football knowledge. Smart. Good so, move. That was good. Good move to be on that one. And last time, the one and only time I was on Tim and Sid, there was an NHL trade. And it was, was between it was uh Chris Weidman. Oh, it's a huge deal, guys. Chris Weidman going from the Sens to the Oilers Oof. for what I'm pretty sure was a conditional pick. Wow. <laughs> so that means there's gonna be a trade. Damn. Well, and, and and uh so so yesterday you actually tweeted out at the beginning of the day, you're like, Oh, my spuddy senses are tingling. There's gonna be a trade today. And I was like, I looked at Jesse, I'm like, how many times is he gonna say or tweet this? <laughs> like <laughs> until I'm wrong. You, you have to understand, until Steve I'm does wrong. say this in the group chat as well, right? It's not just yeah. it's not just on Twitter. Like you looked good yesterday with the Palmieri thing, but uh, were you predicting I? any trade of any sort or a Leafs trade? Yeah, see, I thought any. it was a Leafs trade. Yeah, any. I thought it was a Leafs trade. Any and too many people were like, Bleh. Big idiot. And they're tweeting me this at like four. I'm like, ah, yes. There's never been a trade after four, has there? Yeah, but saying, oh, there might be a trade in the NHL isn't like, that's not a bold take, Steve. It's so bold. I think I think that's the point we're trying to get across. It's so bold. You're not really Remember going that? out on a limb saying that twice a week for the last no, 50 two weeks. limbs, Jesse. He went out on two limbs. Oh. <laughs> I'm not going out on any limbs. I'm going out on my big galaxy brain. <laughs> getting all kinds of things right. Totally. Uh, just getting all kinds of things right. No, well, it was a big deal, and uh, Steve, I guess we owe you an apologies. And I and I tweeted mm-hmm. at you. I said, "I'm sorry." Okay, you're right. You're correct. Yeah. Well, yeah. Adam, I don't know what you have planned for today's show, but how much time do you have allotted for the apology? Uh, well, this was it. We're going to go into the oh. who wore the crown right after this. All right, fair enough. Well, so sorry, Palmieri. His beard is gone. We'll break down the trade a little bit later. Obviously, got to talk thank, about thank Jack Campbell. Thank goodness it is. But Jesse, yeah. who who is? Woo sponsoring uh the show today well today's who wore the crown is sponsored by maverick so maverick said i just made a donation to the sick kids foundation and i wrote up a little thing in our for the crown segment okay uh this episode of uh the sdp is brought to you by maverick a ryerson 2020 graduate majoring in sport media also minored in history if you are looking for a new employee or company why not why not reach out to Maverick? Love that. Well That's done, what Maverick. Maverick. Wrote to us. 
Well done. <laughs> That's somebody who's been to media arts. Good for you. <laughs> yeah. Excellent. <laughs> All right. Well, let's kick it off. Who wants to go? Anybody? Anybody? I mean, you kick it off, Adam. All right. Well, then it's going to be my boy, Jack Campbell, obviously. 10 0 and 0, tying an NHL record, cementing himself in Maple Leafs history with the, with the all time franchise record. 10 wins in a row. And by the way, a little bit of a, a kind of an asterisk on that, not an asterisk in a bad way, but he also was like really hurt in between there, right? Like he had a few wins to start the season and then got really hurt and then won after. Uh, that is a pretty impressive thing. And I, I think, you know, I stay up late just to watch the Jack Campbell interviews. Obviously, all the, the press that has come out about him. Toronto Star had an article. Uh, the Athletic had an article with James talking about his background. Um, and, you know, then Sheldon Keefe saying yesterday that this guy deserves everything good that's coming to him. Um, and we, we actually got a tweet today saying, you know, when do you think the, it'll be, you know, Campbell's time to, when do you think the Leafs are just going to ride Campbell? I'm like, I think, I think we're here. Now? I think we're all well past here. <laughs> yeah, this, yeah. Is, this is the new starting goaltender for the Toronto Maple Leafs. And it was great to see Freddie Anderson even uh, shoot out an Insta story and say, congratulations, Jack. And you see how excited Mitch Marner is for him. You see how excited Austin Matthews is for him. And you see how supportive he is of his teammates. It's amazing to see good things happen to good people. Jack Campbell, you get my crown today and every day. I feel like... I feel like Jack Campbell is becoming my James Reimer, and I didn't even realize it until last night, but I love this guy. Irrationally, I love him. I hope he's here forever. Are we going to talk about the starting goalie after this segment? Because I don't sure. think the Leafs believe that's the case, that they have, we'll a, that they have okay. a number one goalie right now. We'll get into we'll it. We'll get into it. Okay, uh, good. Jesse, do you want next? Uh, no, you go ahead, Steve. Well, fellas, you're not going to believe it, but I'm going to go with Jack Campbell. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's uh, extremely difficult um, to, I mean, p- apparently play 10 games as the Leafs backup. In previous years, <laughs> it has been extremely difficult to play at all. Um, but to get in there and do what he's done, I think he's 13-2-1 now as a Leaf. Um, granted, 10-0-0 of that uh, is this year. But He's also just a story of perseverance. Like this is the first time we've really spoken about Jack Campbell being the starter realistically in his NHL career. He was drafted 11 years ago. He was drafted in 2010, 11th overall by the Dallas stars, 11th overall. Um, Just, but boy, there were some, let me tell you, there were some misses in that damn draft. There were, it was Taylor Hall. What are you looking at? Oh my God. Okay. So first, second, and third. Taylor Hall, Tyler Sagan, Eric Goodbranson. Now, Very good. Goodbranson is not the first two, but he's played over 500 games. You shut up. Ryan Johansson, he'd be much better were it not for the injuries. Nino Niederreiter, though. There's another oh. late rumor. Oh, Brett Nino. Connolly dr- just traded today again on his like 19th NHL team. Jeff Skinner was going very, very, very good for a long time and then not. Alexander Burmistrov, a guy who was supposed to be something and not so much. Dylan McElrath, who remembers that? Do not remember. Rangers picked him 10th overall, and everyone was like, what? Because he was supposed to go like late second round. And then Jack Campbell, followed by Cam Fowler. Now, Jack Campbell, when I was introduced to him, it was the round robin game, Canada versus the States at the World Juniors in Saskatoon. And I happen to be sitting behind a scout and I go, who's in net for the States right now? Cause he made like a couple like really good saves. I think he ended up getting pulled in that game, but like every goal he got pulled in every Canada USA game back then it was, it was ridiculous. It happened in the gold medal game too. I'm pretty sure all four goalies got in. Um, but I go, I go, who's this kid? And the scout just turns around. And he goes, this kid, Oh, he's got ice in his veins. And now, 11 years later, we know it's closer to gummy bears in his veins. <laughs> yes. Like, just that good of a guy. Sprinkles. 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 Yeah. But to, to see him finally um, get his moment to shine um, after high expectations, I'm sure people calling him a bust. This is why you never draft a goalie in the first round. It's opportunity. And he's getting his with the Leafs right now, and he's making the most of it. 
One one day, Jesse, before you get going here, one day somebody's going to do an article on the fact that there are very few goaltenders in the NHL currently drafted after, I believe, the year 2014. There's, in the first a, round? Or no, just in general. Like, I, I don't think there are a lot of goalies. Like, name a lot. Name any starter besides Carter Hart. That's like, are there a lot of starters in the NHL that weren't drafted like five, six, seven years ago? Do you know what I mean? It's like every goalie is 26 or older. It feels like that anyway. And I oh, could be wrong. I no, I think I know what you're trying to say. I think what I would I would I would edit what you're saying and sure. it's the first rounders. They're almost never. Really? And like, and like Malcolm Subban was like the most recent one. It's like, all right, no, you know what? We're gonna do it. We're actually gonna risk it. And ah, there's another one. I don't remember if Carter Hart was a first rounder. I think Spencer Knight was, who just joined the Florida Panthers. And like these days you see a goalie draft in the first round because goalies have had such a hard time uh, succeeding and actually getting past those expectations. Nowadays, when a goalie gets drafted in the first round, everyone's like, wait till you get a load of this guy. Like I remember the hype around John Gibson for his draft. And it was like, yeah, we really like him and we think he's going to be good, but there's something about attaching the one little s little t Mm -hmm. (laughs) to his name yep something about attaching first after it's funny because after the draft happens really your chances are about the same as every other person who got drafted right Mm. now there is a bit of a sure i mean sure each team is going to push their first a little bit harder and try to give them the, the support that they need but when you think about it just get drafted and take care of the rest of it afterwards you know what i mean I do agree with that. Like, that's all the player can do. And Carter Hart, even, by the way, was 48th overall second round. So, like, it it just goes to show. And people are like, wait till you get a load of this kid. He's going to be the biggest thing since blah, blah, blah. And I think he's just having a bad run right now. He's still going to be great. I mean, you don't just forget how to be a goalie overnight. Um, But the hype around him was so big, and he almost didn't even go in the top 50. You know what I mean? So, sometimes... uh, Sometimes that first can work against you, though. And I think it worked against Jack Campbell uh, a little bit. But now look at him. Look at him now. Jesse, go ahead. Uh, Gibson, by the way, was 39th overall round two. Yes, I know. With the Leafs draft pick that they gave to Anaheim. (laughs) (laughs) Great pick by them. Mm. Uh, Sometimes, you know, when you go and you, you see an artist play or a band, you just... You want to hear the hits. You don't want to hear any of the new music. So I think for today, I have to give a shout out to William Nylander because Tavares Galchenyuk Mikheyev just isn't the same as uh, Nylander on uh, Tavares' Oh, role. I thought they were fine. <laughs> You're <laughs> a bully. Yeah, they, were. They, they were okay. They were okay. But you you noticed a difference without him out there. You know, you miss him on the power play. You miss him on Tavares' wing. And I just want to shout out William Nylander, who was out because of contact tracing yesterday. A little shout out. Give him my crown today because we missed him in the lineup. It's not the same when your lower six got to move up and help fill the top six. It's a good point. I mean, people were talking this morning as though it was some sort of disastrous second line. I, I didn't see that at all. I, I thought they were strong. I mean, it's it's about the caliber of winger Tavares got used to playing with in on the island. Like, it's not any different than the guys that he, you know, got major contracts for, Ocpozo and Molson and those guys. Like, I, I don't see a huge difference. I think maybe Galch doesn't have the history, but if Galch keeps playing the way he's playing, he's a top six guy in the league. I so think question. so... With Nylander and Tavares, Galch is the workhorse, right? Mm-hmm. Like, he's he's got to be the guy to go and dig and everything. And last night, we saw a man possessed. That's one of the best offensive performances from a guy who didn't end up scoring um, this season. And we saw how quickly he adjusted to the new role. Mm-hmm. Because it, Mikheyev wasn't, okay, you're Nylander now. No, he was the the guy who dug. Mm-hmm. And it led to the goal, the first goal. Like, it's not an insult against him, but boy, there's a player there in Galchenyuk that, man, I was wrong. I had no idea. No idea he had this left. Yeah. Well, it's pretty great. And uh, happy that Leafs have a little bit of found money. That is who wore the crown. Jesse, you want to read that uh, out again one more time? Yeah, I'll read this from Maverick. He Love. said, uh, to do. 
This episode of the SDP is brought to you by Maverick, a Ryerson student, 2020 graduate, majoring in sport media. If you're looking for a new employee at your media company, why not? Why not? Why not? Reach out to Maverick Sleep. So his last name's Sleep. That's an awesome name. That is good. <laughs> I like that. What, what do his friends call him? Z's? <laughs> Mavs. I think you, if your name's Maverick, you gotta you want to be called Maverick, right? Maverick. That, that's Sleep. already a nickname. I don't know who's <laughs> going to defeat the pillow guy, but I'm pretty sure it's him. The pillow guy? What's that? The, the my pillow guy. Oh, oh yeah. God. Who randomly. Yeah, he's going, need to get he's losing his mind, eh? Like he's losing his mind. Losing? You can't lose something you never had. I guess. Um, hey, you want to know, uh, just to put a bow on this, Jack Campbell, uh, the first trade out of Dallas. He was traded for Nick Ebert. So Nick Ebert, like straight up, one for one. Nick Ebert was a seventh round pick in 2012, 211th overall, so almost last overall. And Dallas, by the looks of it, only had him in the AHL for 68 games one year. That's who Jack Campbell was given up with or given up for. Wow. (laughs) Here you go. (laughs) Like he was, he was nothing to the Dallas Stars. Well, let me ask you this because I'm just going through NHL.com stats right now. How many goalies drafted at uh, on or after the year 2015 have played over 20 games this year? Oh, can't be a lot. Can't Matt Murray, I think. And um, what, what was what were your parameters there? On or after the draft in 2015, which by the way is six years ago. Yo, uh, Matt so, Murray so was Carter drafted Hart. in 2012. Yeah. So what? here are the names. Are you when ready? When did that happen? Names? You guys want the names? Yes. There are three. Carter Hart, Mackenzie Blackwood, and Dallas's goalie Jake Ottinger. Is that how it's Who was made his NHL debut this year? I want to yeah. say and he might have played, played last year. He's played twenty games, been pretty good. Guys, I, that's what I was trying to say earlier. Is that like there aren't a lot of goalies here? Um, and then if you go the year before, uh, you got Thatcher Demko, you got Shosturkin, uh, and then uh, I can never say his name. Vitek Vanacek. Is that is that Vanacek, how I say? I think Vanacek. Yeah, Those are in Washington, all drafted goalies. There's been three over the last six years that are playing 20 games or more this year. Okay. Wow. Wow. Really? That's what I'm saying. There aren't a lot of starters that are like, there are not a lot of like regular starters in the NHL. And I'm talking about 20 plus games at this point. And then the year before 2013, you got Yari, uh, Tristan Jari, UC Saros and Calvin Peterson. Um, yeah. Cal LA. Peterson's do, done well in LA. And then Ilya Samsonov. That, like has he been injured? How and how's this for a how's this eight, for a draft? Eight ninety six. Never mind. You have Sorry. in twenty twelve Hellebuck, Vasilevsky, Corpusalo, Anderson, Murray, Allmark, Dreider, and Subban. But uh, if you count Matt Murray, Anderson, Corpusalo, Vasilevsky, and Hellebuck are the only ones that have played over twenty games. Now maybe that's an, a random uh, a random thing, but it it just goes to show that. Like, and after you get to 2017, if you look this up on NHL.com, there are like no starters. Like nobody's played a game. Now I know it's a shortened season, but there is a startling lack of new starting goalie talent in the NHL. When you look at things like that. I think it's just that goalies are really good. So the good ones stick around and there's only uh, next year. There's going to be, oh God, 32 times two, not a smart man, 64 jobs. But Steve, three people in six years? Oh, no. It's alarming to me. I'm surprised. I'm surprised it's that low. I'm just, I'm just trying to say, like, it's, it's, uh, it's tough to get a job, man. It's, like, I would expect three people a year. You know what I mean? Because your, your, average, your average goal is going to last, th- you know, in, in, in all honesty. The average NHL career is going to be, like, less than 100 games, especially for a goalie. Way less. And so if you right. get, I think get, the, the development curve for goalies is just a lot longer as well. Like you let them, way longer. You let them have time in the minors. Like it's like a five year development. So you gotta, yeah, you gotta, you gotta give gotta the commit. goalies time. Yeah. It's, this is it's why Hextall basically got canned over the handling of Carter Hart. Right. Cause right. Because they wanted it. him to start. Right. Yeah. yeah. And he didn't as a goalie. Like, like it's, wouldn't push it. it's a little funny that they didn't trust the goalies judgment there. Well, they mm-hmm. did make the playoffs last year and did well. They did. So, but now we're seeing but some. It looks like he was right. 
That's the thing. <laughs> right now. Look, yeah, Carter Hart, they've, they've sent him to go do more development. Like they kept him around, just had him practicing for that exact reason, development. And then, so it just seems like, hey, stick with this timeline of, hey, if you're a goalie, you can't come in and affect the league at the age of 20, 21. You're not like a, a centerman who can just hop in the league. You know, you're going to need five, six years in the minors. Right. Yeah. I mean, you look at Jordan, Jordan Bennington too, right? Like there's a guy that, you know, was drafted in 2011. And, and would have gone to the ECHL had he not refused assignment. Yeah. Crazy. And the guy who tried to send him there was Martin Brodeur. <laughs> <laughs> That's like, so funny. How do you tell Martin Brodeur no? Yeah. I don't know. I don't know yeah. how you do that. <laughs> hey, not sure. one of the best goalies of all time, shove it. And it's, then he uh, was right. Yeah, it's anyway, it's very, very interesting. I, I don't know. Maybe that's maybe that's normal. Maybe it's only like a goalie a year. But as Steve said, it's 64 jobs. Um, I guess a lot of these guys can be undrafted or free agent signings, which is why like we talk about we have talked about this uh, in the past about like the lack of quote unquote depth at the goaltender position with the Leafs. But it seems like it's one of those things where the Leafs are playing the odds with what players they can develop into great players, meaning the Leafs know how to develop skilled young forwards they know how to do that it's a factory you look at what's happened in the last five years it's just person after person after person and i I would count anybody from like connor brown and andreas jansen kasperi kapan and uh zach hyman william nylander like guys that i mean the amount amount of guys who are no longer here yes yes 100 percent. a factory for their own team and the rest of the league and this year vancouver and yeah. Vancouver. And Vancouver. I mean, you could count Josh Levo in that too. There's lots of guys that are, Absolutely. you know, so maybe the Leafs are looking at it like, listen, this is our best chance to find value. We'll get these young skilled guys and hopefully we can trade them for some value back. And maybe that's where your goaltender comes from. But, you know, I mean, what did Freddie cost him? Sam Steele, which was the first round. Yeah. He was like a first and a second. It was Sam Steele. And uh, was it Maxime Comtois? Was he's it Comtois? A, yeah, he's a good Who's player. Who's been playing great too. this year. Yeah. yeah. yeah Real yeah. good player. And uh, Steve, I think you said it like, I don't know, two years ago or something. You were, you were saying how, what are what are the pieces for? Like you draft and develop these guys, and then now you got to ship them away to get pieces back, you know? So I think like the least got to use these guys and use all this extra forward depth they have to get the other things they need. Well, and, mm-hmm. and I think of the guys where I was like, Ugh, no, like I don't want to let go of them. Mm-hmm. Like, for, like some of the guys... Uh, who we were wrong about. Like, I was like, no, don't let go of Brendan Leipzig. Whoops. Um, so, so that one was wrong. Spent a little bit too much time on that. But even like letting go of Trevor Moore, like who is a great player, really like him. Kings fans like him. He's doing a good job there. Look what it got you. Carl Grundstrom. No, oh, no. You get Jake Muzzin, you know? Okay. And I still... You know, Sean Dursey got called up to the Kings, and and I don't know if he's played there yet. And I go, oh, that's the Muzzin deal. Oh, it's the Muzzin deal. And now he's going to be a Leaf for, by the time it's all said and done, six years. All right, you have Jake Muzzin. Like, you developed this guy, and then you moved out the pieces, and you got Jake Muzzin. Yeah, you have a guy that might become Jake Muzzin, and then you have actual Jake Muzzin who turned into Jake Muzzin before you got him. (laughs) Yeah, (laughs) exactly. What what are you doing all this for? Right. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. So maybe, I mean, I mean, maybe that's the, the strategy they've adopted. Obviously they've got guys in the minors and they're doing okay. Um, I don't know if any, anybody has pegged any of the Leafs guys. Is it uh wool or who else they have? It's uh, Ian Scott, um, Archer Akhtyumov in uh, Russia, uh, Anthony Beauvillier. I'm not sure where he's playing right now. I think he was in the queue. And I like, think is anybody I'm, pegging or, no, no, guys no. as potential Beauvillier. starters? Zach, yeah, it's not Anthony. It's Zachary. I'm maybe did I just combine like Antoine Bebo and I, so. <laughs> I, I might have. Yeah, Zachary Beauvillier, I think is his name, and um, I think they have one other guy, and I forget his name. I'm gonna look him up. Zachary. You know who I'm yeah, talking and- about, though, right? I nailed it. So there's an Anthony Beauvillier, which is not the one you were talking about. I don't believe. Oh, Anthony Beauvillier is in the Islanders. I'm a yeah, mom. yeah. Sorry, yeah. sorry. Who do we got? Who do we got? What are we talking about here? <laughs> I'm trying to figure it out. Leafs goalie depth. My bad. No, it's Zachary. Leafs. It is Zach. Okay. That's what I thought. All right. So, but the, the question becomes like, are any of those guys pegged to be starters? And if they're not, does it matter? Well, it's, I mean, goalies are voodoo. Like I know it's a, it's a lazy, it's a lazy mantra and it's not always true, but like, you know, we're, 
for example, it just brought up Malcolm Subban and we're like, ah, well, you know, first rounders, like he could become a starter tomorrow. Like that's just how goalies work. And he's played a few games where I'm like, how isn't this guy a starter? Remember last year, that overtime game against Vegas, when where we actually saw surrounded by people. Imagine that. That was weird. Mm-hmm. And like a guy like Subban, every minor league team he's been on, he's been unbelievable. Like he even even when he was coming up with uh, when he was in the Boston organization, when he was playing for the Providence Bruins, he was yep. he was unbe- he had like a 920 save percentage. But then they brought him to the NHL for like a, a game or two and it didn't work out. And then he goes to Vegas and it's not working out. But then they send him back down the AHL and he's good all of a sudden. So TJ Brennan. Right. <laughs> you, you never know about goalies. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. No. And and. I feel like goalies are the sort of thing you you can look at. I feel like you can look at a player's stats, like a forward stats, and extrapolate some things from that um, in junior. Um, for a goalie, because junior is so cyclical in who the good teams are and who the bad teams are, age plays such a huge factor. You know, if you're a 20 year old, you probably you you might have absolutely no NHL future, but you're the king of that league. Yeah, and if you're a sixteen-year-old, yeah. yeah, you could have the best future out of anybody, but you're a bum, you know. Unless your uh, name is Bedard, uh, apparently J- yeah. Connor Bedard. What a monster in the WHL! He just got he got exception, right? The special yeah. exception, yeah, the high and, skill or whatever it's called. And he's bullying kids five years older than him. Yeah. Like it's, <laughs> I've never seen anything like it. It's absolutely <laughs> ridiculous. Um, but goalies, I feel like you have to watch um, because, like Garrett Sparks. I want to say got drafted on a shitty team um, and he did okay. And I, and I remember looking at like going, why, why did they pick this player above anybody else? And I looked at the Guelph storm who he was on and I'm like, Oh, he's basically got the keys to the car though. So they obviously saw something they liked in him. And then next year he's going to play a shitload of games for Guelph. And then he did. And he was really good. So it's it's a lot of circumstance. I, I think that's true for all players, um, but like goalies, goalies especially. If there's nowhere for you to play, where are you supposed to play? Right, and it's, I have the Carter I have Hagen no idea again. if anybody's ever done like a deep stat dive into how much uh, the defense affects the goalie. Like, what caliber of defense do you? Uh, does it start affecting your goaltending in terms of like, if it's so good is how many percentages is save percentage raised or even the system that the team is playing, like in terms of what system is the team playing, are you dropping a goaltender save percentage? Are you raising it because you want to allow more shots because you want to limit shot attempts? Like all that stuff plays such a factor in goaltending. So it's not even just like circumstance of your players it's circumstance of the team and overall. And that's why goaltending just seems to be voodoo and you never know. Well, uh, I sorry, like if you're an ahead. Islanders goalie, like you probably you have some sort of advantage just because of how they play. There I mean, was, yeah, I th- I'm sure that exists, and I'm sure if extra skater, which to really throw it back, I'm sure if it still existed too, we'd be able to track that publicly, wouldn't we? Like Sport Logic would have that, and yeah, uh, you Sport have to Logic think that they would, would that they would know something about that, right? Yeah, yeah. But uh, uh, and you see, like a guy like Brayden Holpe, I don't know how much of. Brayden Holpe's decline had to do with Brayden Holpe and how much of it had to do with the fact that maybe the Caps defense wasn't as good anymore without Barry Trotz. You know, as soon as Barry Trotz leaves, Brayden Holpe's not a good, not an elite goalie anymore all of a sudden. What happened? Well, and, you know, the the Leafs with their guys go to the Islanders and et cetera, et cetera. I was, there's a guy whose story, I, st- I need to get back in touch with this guy. I was too young wh- when I spoke to him and I didn't, I wasn't as good at storytelling, but th- this guy was drafted in the third round by the Kings in 1992. His name is Sandy Allen. And I want to say he grew up kind of in the neighborhood that we did, Adam, but he's much older. Um, oh, he grew up in our neighborhood, but it says he's from Nassau in the Bahamas. Okay. okay. All I right. did not know that. But anyway, um, so he was part of the Kings organization, but they were really good because you'll remember they were you know going to the Stanley Cup final and they had Gretzky and everything. And he was telling me like, oh, yeah, I went to training camp with Gretzky and they just don't have an opportunity for him. So he gets traded. I want to say it was to the it was either the Montreal or the Hartford organization. And, you know, he's you know, he's going to challenge for the backup job. But they got this kid who he's, he's never really heard much of, but he looks pretty good. And that kid ends up being J.S. Jaguar. 
<laughs> and just like, so like, what are you going to do? And he ends up playing most of his career in the ECHL and it ends because they were on a road trip um, and him and his teammates were playing football at the hotel they were at and they weren't on the first floor. They weren't on the ground level of the hotel and he catches a football that was thrown his way and he actually fell off the hotel balcony. Oh my God. Yeah. It's a, it's a wild story. I gotta, I gotta, I gotta get a hold of him again. Um, that was, but that part was an aside. I think the reason I started telling that story was, uh, yeah, it's difficult to get an opportunity there, kids. Steve, why did, why did you bring up that story? I don't know because I don't have a good brain. Like, oh, I, I literally don't I, have I a good brain. I want to know where red. Sandy Allen went to high school. That's what I, I mean, probably <laughs> mow it. Like, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I'm not, I don't have a good brain, guys. That's why I brought it up. I'm sorry. Okay. <laughs> we can delete it if you want. <laughs> no, I think we're going to leave it in there. <laughs> okay. You ever play for the PD Pride, guys? You oh, played for the PD God. Pride. I'm sweating right now. Adam, what are your takeaways from Sandy Allen's career? I mean, it sounds it sounds like that was a pretty tough story. That and and <laughs> my favorite part about this that remains unanswered is Steve feels like he was unqualified or at least not experienced enough to tell the story properly. Oh so my God. I yeah. would like to know how the story was in fact told. Like, <laughs> was it told? Well, like, it was fucking like, years ago, so I don't remember. <laughs> I thought you, I was good at it. No, I guess not. Who did you tell it for? Who did you do uh, it for? Again? I'm uh, no, I'm, I'm pulling the shoot. I'm bailing. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh he played with Manny Legacy. Oh, Steve, cool. We all have that. We've all had that. Okay. Just, it's all I'm just on his ECHL. I'm just on his hockey DB right now. He played with Manny Legacy. That's cool. Oh, Dwayne yeah. Rollison. Mm-hmm. Cool. Can we title the episode Sandy Allen? We for sure can. <laughs> 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 all right. Let's move on to the goaltender discussion at large. Uh, again, Basing it off the tweet that I got uh, and somebody, and I, I'm sorry, I, I don't have your name on, on file, but basically they, they said, hey, what time, when do you think the Leafs are going to ride Jack Campbell all the way through the next season? And I, my response to him was, I think you're looking at it. It's already started. And Jesse, you don't seem to think that that's necessarily the case. I am a believer in sport that you don't lose your uh, role to injury. So I, I think when, when Frederick Anderson comes back and he's fully healthy, he's going to get a shot. It, it might yes. be one game. It might be two games. It might be a handful of just back and forth. But, and, but he's going to get a shot. And I think Sheldon Keith believes that because he hasn't said anything uh, to the contrary. He said he's going to be back before the end of the season, sometime after the trade deadline. But Frederick Anderson is going to be back in the regular season and he's going to get a shot because it's still his job until he loses it on the ice. Is what I believe. So if he goes out and maybe first game back, terrible, four bad goals, something, then it could be gone. Then I'm then I say Jack Campbell, hey, this is your net. But until that happens on the ice, I don't think off the ice, just because Campbell's playing the best ho- hockey a goaltender can play ever, doesn't mean that Frederick Anders still not the number one goalie until he loses it. But what's his job though? You know what I mean? Like st- starting goalie. Okay, so just guy who stops pucks for the Leafs. Like, there's 16 games remaining, and he's not playing yet. Yeah. So, like, if he comes back, let's say, first game before the playoffs, or, sorry, he comes back first game of the playoffs, mm-hmm. uh, no, that's actually not he's, your job. Then and you do gonna, lose your job to injury. He's probably yeah. going to he's gonna start one of those games. Like, he's, he, he's not coming back and not getting a shot. Mm, right. He probably shouldn't depending on the circumstance when it depends on when he comes back i would say now the, the, i wish we I had would, any idea when that would be they said they well, said before the end so it's not going to be first game of the playoffs sheldon keep already said it's going to be before the end of the regular season right and if jack campbell yeah, that's a 16 game span like it, is that tomorrow sheldon no it's a, he said after the, the trade deadline and before the end of the right so somewhere in that it'll be in the last in, five games yeah is, is he in the that premier window. what is this Vague well, bullshit. Well, he can't. What is the, in, he can't. <laughs> you're Steve, asking a lot. Here's what's, here's what's Where do I get on. vaccinated, Sheldon? Freddie's going to go and get surgery this summer. I'd almost put I'd put money on it. We know that, right? Freddie's going to go get surgery this that. summer. I think Whatever it is. I don't know if it's a hip, if it's a knee, if it's a groin. I don't know, but he needs surgery. Very clearly, allegedly, maybe. I'm just guessing, but I'm just, you know, 
been around long enough to know. Seems Good like guess. surgery's needed. Yeah. Good guess. Fair, Almost right? every active NHL player could get surgery if they wanted. Right. And in and, and, and actual fact, you don't want to get surgery. You want to rehab the injury because mm-hmm. surgery is sort of a short-term fix. It's not really that good for you. It, it, you know, the, what you... You know, what you'd like to do is what Connor McDavid did, which is rehab the knee right back to where it was. And like a mute and then like film a, a Sportsnet special that's really good. And like everybody gives you a bunch of attention and thinks you're awesome. Yeah. And all the comments are <laughs> McDavid net piece of shit. <laughs> what? <laughs> Fire dangle. Uh, <laughs> should I get off? Should I jump off the show? <laughs> I feel like I should. <laughs> no, man. No. God. So, so, I. I <laughs> God, I'm the Michael Hutchinson of this trio right you now. And not. I'm not. Oh my God. All right. So, but here's here's what I would say. With Jack Campbell, it's it's an interesting thing. J- Greg Wyshynski brought up a point in his ESPN article uh, that I loved. And it's, at what point do we start considering Jack Campbell for Vesna? The guy is 10 0 and 0. Damn. Okay. With a 157 goals against average and a 944 save. If he <laughs> plays 10 of the next 16 games, let's say. And that's fair, right? Like it, it, uh, he might play more than that, but if he just plays ten, that's forty games or not forty games. That's thirty-five no. games of an NHL season, something like that. Can a goalie that's played that little, quote unquote, that is, little, be eligible for something like what that? What is the exact uh, extrapolation to eighty-two games? I don't know. I that, um, that's the answer for me. If it's not, if it's like thirty back. games, then uh, uh-uh. it's not. Well, enough. okay. So Robin Leonard and I want to say Ben Bishop a couple of years ago had ridiculous numbers, but they only played like half the season. And I want to say they played like, it was something like 43 games each. So right around half, barely over half Campbell. If he played every game for the rest of the season, could not even get to that. He couldn't get to no. 50% of the Leafs games. He'd have to go 26 and 0. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, <laughs> then yeah. <laughs> then yeah. Well, I, I said today, I'm like, okay, let's say he goes 20 and six. He's not going to get the opportunity to do that, but let's say. Mm -hmm. um, I think he'll certainly get many votes. Mm -hmm. Uh, May even get nominated, but I doubt it. I doubt it very much. It's just, it's too rare of a circumstance. And you talk about, you know, guys not wanting to vote for the Leafs um, (laughs) because they don't want to be looked at as homers. I mean, you know how you can definitely get that perception is if you give the Vesna to a guy who's played less than half of the games. Fair. Yeah, that's fair. I mean, it's, it's just, I just thought it was an interesting thought, right? Oh, you know, yeah. it's kind of, kind well, of a fun thing. Well, Adam, I mean, we talk about Jack Campbell being drafted forever ago, 2010, mm-hmm. you know, whose career began long before, before 2010, Greg Wyshynski. <laughs> Generate those damn clicks, Wish. Generate those clicks. That is that is brilliant. That is brilliant. You know, I, I wish I had a camera on him the moment that clicked. Oh, my God. Jack Campbell for Vez. Click, 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 click. Here you go, bosses at ESPN. No, no, no. It's, it's hockey. I know you're new here. Um, <laughs> th- trust me, they're going to love it. Okay, thanks. Bye. Steve. Yes. You just said... Uh, what if Campbell goes 20 and six, you know, which is possible if you played every last game of the season. Sure. Right now, if I'm a Tampa Bay Lightning fan, I'm listening to this podcast, I'd be pissed off because Andre Vasilevsky right now is 23 and six. Hilarious. (laughs) He also leads the league in save percentage if you cut off uh, games played. So like Campbell wouldn't be included in that. He has a 931. He's got three shutouts. Oh my God. He's got a two GAA. Like Vasilevsky's getting, yeah, he's going to get it. Vesna so, trophy. So this wait, is the okay. heart conversation. Then we know the winner who's second and third. Right. 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 Yeah. 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 <laughs> Campbell could come in third. Maybe yeah, but... even if he gets, if he gets top five, that's cool. Give him a vote. Right, Just right. throw him a fifth place vote. Who cares? But like right? going 20 and six, Vasilevsky's like, Hey, I'm 23 and six. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so, so if Campbell does, if, if Campbell goes above expo- expectations and plays every game for the rest of the season, he's still, could not achieve the record that Andre Vasilevsky already has. Yes. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but it's Andre oh Vasilevsky. Yeah. <laughs> That's crazy. That's crazy. He's, he's had a great season. <laughs> Holy shit. That's um that's the best goalie in the league. Like easily, mm-hmm. like you know, there's the there's the conversation: who's winning the Vesna and who's the best goalie in the league? Andre Vasilevsky is both, and right. it's very rare. You know, who's going to be the heart winner? Who's the best player in the league? 
it's it's often a different conversation it's been Connor mcdavid for a few years now but who's winning the heart mm-hmm. andre vasilevsky is the best goaltender in the nhl by far also yes. first round pick so there's a first round pick that panned out very rare yeah mm-hmm. very rare yeah yep. and he's he's a guy who's he's been the chosen one for a long time like we're talking immediately after he was drafted um, starter in the KHL, which is extremely difficult to do, or, or was like a tandem goalie in the KHL. The let me let me look up Askarov. Can we can we just go back to the Campbell? Um... No, <laughs> I'm hijacking the show. Okay, Askarov's played nine KHL games. He's a 951. That's very very stupid. Eleventh overall. Can't wait for him to become a starter in eleven years. Sorry, Adam. What? Steve Dangle, a un tipo malionte. What does that mean? Well, in case you don't speak Spanish, that means Steve Dangle is a smelly guy. And I just learned it from Babbel, the number one selling language learning app in the world. It's one of my goals for the new year was to learn a little bit of, you know, new language. And Babbel has made the whole process addictively fun and easy. And I can throw little barbs at my friends in different languages. Little bite-sized lessons, perfect for guys like me who really have low attention spans. They're 15 minutes long and they make it perfect to learn a new language. You're not spending your time conjugating verbs. We're talking about real world conversations. Now you've seen other language learning apps and they use AI for their lesson plans. Babbel lessons were created by using over 100 language experts. Their teaching method has been scientifically proven to be effective. And with Babbel, you could choose from 14 different languages, including the one I'm trying to learn, Spanish. Plus Babbel's speech recognition technology helps you improve your pronunciation and accent. That's the part I'm still working on. So just bear with me. Right now, when you purchase a three-month Babbel subscription, you'll get an additional three months for free. So that's six months for the price of three. Just go to Babbel.com and use the promo code THEORY. That's B-A-B-B-E-L.com code THEORY for an extra three months free. Babbel, language for life. So can we get back to the Campbell thing for just a second? Here's what I think is going to go down. And here's the danger that Sheldon Keefe faces. because, Because if Freddie Anderson comes back... And you have to give Freddie Anderson a couple of games. His first game back cannot be playoff game one. Otherwise, and if you're a Buffalo Bills fan, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. You'll risk a Rob Johnson, Doug Flutie situation where Doug Flutie takes you to the playoffs, but the ownership says, well, wait a second. We just spent $25 million signing Rob Johnson and we're going to start him and you lose Uh, because Doug Flutie was the quarterback of that team and it should have been that way. I also feel like, you know, when with the Jays, and we mentioned this a couple of days ago with Mark Burley, um, you know, starting him when they probably shouldn't have. Um, I think in this particular instance, Sheldon Keefe risks one thing, and that is the magic beans that are Freddie Anderson. If Freddie Anderson is able to come and sit behind the bench and he's healthy-ish, just enough to sit there, you still have Freddie Anderson hanging over the other team. Like, oh, if we chase Jack Campbell, Freddie Anderson's going to be there. But if Freddie Anderson comes in for one or two games and he sucks, then the other team knows Freddie Anderson sucks. So all we have to do is get in on Jack Campbell. And you put you put that in front of a team like, I don't know, the Boston Bruins. Start a little run here, a little run there. Then all of a sudden you've got the Leafs' weak point because it's not their defense Mon- this year. Montreal, I, uh, I was just watching them in the final few minutes there. I'm like, boy, this team likes to crash the net. They sure do. And, and that's how they got both goals. I mean, Corey Perry was a defensive break, did the first one. Um, But uh, add Gallagher to the mix, because remember, they didn't have Gallagher last night. Mm -hmm. And whoever they add, because those liars are going to add, shut up, Montreal. (laughs) Corey Perry was on a mission last night. Sure was. He looked looked great for 82 years old. I'm pretty sure Corey Perry, it was going to be Corey Perry or Wayne Simmons. And I think the Leafs went with Wayne Simmons. I'm pretty sure that's what happened. And uh, actually, in fact, I've heard that's what happened. Mm-hmm. And so I think Corey Perry was out to prove like, hey, you made a mistake, which good for him. Yeah, could be that. I don't remember how many games he's played against the Leafs this season, if any. I feel like he wasn't in the first maybe couple. Um, yeah, it's I don't know. It's a fun debate. It, But I tell you what, Perry looked a lot like the Perry that we saw in the bubble against Dallas or not against Dallas with Dallas. Um, just uh, old former MVP who can just turn it on for spurts. Mm-hmm. He Whenever can, he wants. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And like, I'm not relying on Corey Perry for the first 57 minutes of the game. <laughs> like I know he scored mm-hmm. one in the first 57 minutes, but you can't lean on the guy. You can't, his body yeah. can't do it. 
Mm-hmm. Um, but it's three minutes to go. We're going to lose if you don't score. Yeah, he can he can pop the Popeye spinach and get in there and, and maybe get you one. Like he's it's what what was it? His knee? He wasn't exactly known for his knees. No. <laughs> I know Adam, you need him, but th- that dude was known for his elbows. Just to your point, Adam, I think that's the best case scenario for the Leafs is just, hey, Campbell and Anderson are really rolling and we have mm-hmm. both of them. And it's uh, like a Matt Murray, um, uh, Marc-Andre Fleury situation where you just got two goalies for a cup run. And you're yeah. like, what? Yep. Just too great. many riches. This is awesome. <laughs> that would I'm be Jeff great. Bezos of the <laughs> Eagle. You know? Can... can- <laughs> Can you guys help me out here? Because here's what I'm trying to figure out, because there are still Freddie Anderson trade rumors, which I think is probably part of the reason why the Leafs are so coy about this. Under what scenario would it make sense to trade Freddie Anderson? I'm not seeing one. This year? Yeah. You got a goalie. Well, he's not going to be back next year. Yeah, no, you're not trading him. If you get a goalie back in the trade, yeah. But. Right. But why is the team acquiring him then acquiring him? Right. Because if the Leafs get a goalie, it's because they don't think Freddie Anderson's healthy. Mm-hmm. If Freddie is healthy and they trade for a goalie, they're just saying he sucks, which I don't think they believe. I don't think they do either. I don't think I don't think I would believe. I don't that. think he does. I don't think it's the truth. No, I don't think that. I, I think if you if you have to move Freddie Anderson, you're moving his salary and you don't think he's going to play. Mm hmm. You're moving it. You're, it's to make money work, and you don't think Freddie's going to play. And the That's team what, who's trading for him is trading for the other piece that comes with Freddie. Yeah, and Freddie Freddy. is just the cap that's coming with it. Hey, guys, what about this? What about this? <laughs> no, don't read it. Hearing that the Toronto Maple Leafs are working on a deal with the Buffalo Sabres. <laughs> oh, no. Headed to the Leafs from Buffalo would be Taylor Hall and Lena Solmark. Toronto would include Freddie Anderson, Rasmus Sandin, Nick Robertson, and a prospect. This is subject to change. I'd burn every leaf out of my own. <laughs> By the way, uh, aren't Sandine and Robertson prospects? Like, I, I don't, what other prospects? That's all the prospects. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Sorry, read it again. Okay, all right, all right. I missed now, this, this is, the first time. This is time. a little unfair. There's no way you said what I think you it's, just said. It's from a made-up Twitter account. Yes. Like, it's just, it's I know burner. That. Hearing <laughs> that the Toronto Maple Leafs are working on a deal with the Buffalo Sabres, headed to the Leafs from Buffalo would be Taylor Hall and Linus Allmark. Toronto... Uh, names involved include Freddie Anderson, Rasmus Sandin, Nick Robertson, and a prospect. This is subject to changes. And a pr- <laughs> guys, try harder. Fuck. Like, <laughs> right. Well, yo, That's this horrible. This, this account uh, has 20, 2,000 followers, man. Because oh. people want to believe. Thepuckauthority.com. There you go. There's their shout out. Oh. I mean, they have a podcast and everything. Listen, they might have heard it. But no, it's just, totally. It doesn't, there's no way that makes actual sense. No, no, no. I wouldn't give up one of Robertson or Sandine for either of those players. I wouldn't either. Yeah. Get out of my face. Yeah. No, but like we're dismissing it and then we're not accounting for the fact that they are the authority. So oh. they must know if it they're could've... the authority. It could have been puck authority, but they're the puck authority. <laughs> like we're the Steve Dangle podcast, you know. Mm, I'm the <laughs> TPA, the TPA, T TPA. I don't like her new name. I don't like her very much. I don't think it's anyway, listen, name. I don't want to rip these guys, but it's sort of like, come on, guys, are you kidding? I me? do. It's terrible. A little bit. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> no, I but like, a lot of people wanted us to bring back Smart Insider Man to talk I'm about chief that. among them. We haven't activated Smart Insider Man since I think 2018, and I think it might be time. Do you guys I don't remember the password? password. I don't no. remember. I mean, what? Remember what? <laughs> what? I haven't, smart I haven't spoken man. to him in many a moon. <laughs> that account still has about five thousand followers. Which is <laughs> no good. way. We have double the puck authority, sir. <laughs> on smart insider. Oh, uh, who's we? <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. Smart insider man. You know, it's been years since we've heard the truth. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna look up the password for him. A lot of people don't know Smart Insider Man. We're gonna have to include that in the link uh, yeah. because that is one of the best. Best funniest thing Steve's ever come up with. I yeah. love smart insight. That you eight. died laughing at, and Jesse did not react to. <laughs> <laughs> it was okay, yeah, it was okay. I would watch the video Sim back. Two. Adam is having an asthma attack, and <laughs> Jesse is just like, I think doing that his was taxes. The, that was the height of the hockey man era. You know what I mean? Like the the height of the the still like 
kind of high on our own farts era of of insider stuff and and it was a little it was just it was so fitting because everybody's like well it's a good hockey man what the hell does that mean um and i, I think that's why it got me it was so funny because it was just like it there was this group of people men who were like we're men and not only were we men we're hockey men mm-hmm. you imagine putting that on your bumble profile i'm a hockey man it was that era to the the insider guys. It wasn't like commodified to like three. Right now, it's like five guys total. Yeah, like where you're like, this is legit information. At that point, there was like like fifteen guys. We're like, any of these guys could break this trade right now. There's like mm. ten at Sportsnet and ten at uh, TSN, and but and then all these extra guys on the peripheral who like, oh, I heard a thing or two. And then you have the guys who are just kind of trying to get in on it, being like, yeah, I'm a hockey guy, and rumors are saying. And it was still believable that a guy with a random Twitter ca- account right. could could break something. And I think the only credibility that would have ever had is the Brett Lebda trade, right, Steve? Yes, mm-hmm. it I, I'm glad you brought that up. It's so there was evidence that it could happen. Yeah, <laughs> just <laughs> once, yeah. just once. The puck authority, <laughs> listen, this is how it works. If you're right, we got to apologize. Mm-hmm. So there was someone who was basically kicked off of like HF boards <laughs> because they're like, oh, yeah, I heard Brett Lebda is going to sign with the Leafs. And everyone's like, shut up. That doesn't make any sense. Why would it? And like two weeks later, it happened. Like, oh, sorry. Sorry. Sorry, guys. Sorry. And they, <laughs> sorry. Hi. It's, I, I hope you get your account back. Sorry. <laughs> and then Brett Lebda was great. Boy, that guy had as bad a tenure. You talk about a bad start just dictating the rest of your entire career, basically. Because I, I remember he, 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 he couldn't trended. get in. He trended when they signed him because people were making fun of him. Well, there was that. Well, we automatically, the Leafs were so bad. We're like, we got a defenseman from Detroit. He's automatically in our top three. And uh, so they got him. And I want to say he missed the first few games of the season because he was injured. And then he gets into his first game and he ends up scoring the game winning goal on himself. Because he like whacked it into the his own net somehow. Uh-huh. Then there was the nine three minus three game against Atlanta. Oh, Brett Ledda did not have a good time in Toronto. Mm-mm. No, sir, not fun. I wonder if you could ever do a documentary on players that came to the Leafs, fucking hated it, and still hate the Leafs. <laughs> I'm sure. I'm sure there's a lot. I'm sure there's a lot. I haven't spoken to him about it, but I know Christopher Stieg um, had a bad time and he wasn't here very long. I'm sure everyone heard the rumor about his car. And did that happen? I, I assume it did. Oof. I don't know. Yeah. People are, people are assholes though. Yeah. Like, well, especially uh, in that era too, where they were just, it, the Leafs were bad. The fans were mean. It was ugly. It was an ugly era. Well, and they were mean back to the fans. Yeah. Like yeah, salute condescending. and all that shit. And yeah, it's like, buddy, don't chirp me. You suck. <laughs> and like don't I chirp always us. say, you stink. Go win the, a game. The fans are going to be a lot around a lot longer than the players are, right? Oh yeah. Now I'm still going to be here. You're not. So you know, while you're here, you're in my house. And I think sometimes you sort of forget that. It's like it is right. the game belongs to the fans. It does. Well, and they hadn't seen for a long time. Like no player had seen for a long time the benefits of being good in Toronto. Mm-hmm. Right. And uh, 2013, they were only good for a hot minute, and then it was disastrous. And now, even if the Leafs were to fall off, like, yeah, there's going to be some wrath. Obviously, there's always the possibility of wrath. But you'll understand, like, dude, I'm going to get on the – I'm going to be the team's 13th forward, and I'm going to get a deal with a major North American company. Mm -hmm. I'm going to be Ilya Mikheyev, have a decent first game, literally say the word soup and get a deal with Campbell's. <laughs> you know what I mean? That right. Now everyone sees the benefit. Freddie Goche was in a national commercial for all of last year. That shouldn't happen. Who allowed that to happen? Mitch Marner. Please. Mitch Marner's Us. on my way home every day. Uh, he's, he's stapled to a fence in my neighborhood and it's, he's wearing like a green hockey Jersey green, and it's some yeah. sort of real estate thing. And he's like, yeah. I've seen like, those around town too. I, if I was a real estate company, I'm like Mitch Marner. All right. It doesn't well, matter. I guess got, it doesn't matter. Any yeah. Leafs fan that got your attention. 
Yeah. yeah. Zach Hyman's got a deal. Connor Brown had a deal. Everyone's got a deal. I wonder if they did that commercial with Apple, for goodness sakes. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Marner and Matthews. Like, can't get bigger than that. Yeah, Richard wor- Clune has a movie. Yeah. It's true. Yeah. The dude um, made a movie. I wonder if in your doc, Adam, uh, about least players who came here and hated Toronto and then left, I wonder if a guy like Tyson Berry would make it. Mm, he seems like a you nice know, guy. He does. But, like, you come here for, ha- uh, what, like half a season, a full season-ish, and then it's just, n- it's not a fun time, and then you leave, and then all, imagine what all the Leafs fans who are angry and don't like Tyson Berry are saying. You know? I'm sure Tyson Berry told Leaf fans to fuck off in his in his quieter moments, for sure. <laughs> you know? Um, and, and deservedly so. He was very good as soon as the worst the, the worst handling coach ever. I can't believe what Mike Babcock did to that. Team. You look at, look at the, you got to look at the Leafs record since Keith uh, took over. They're third best in the league. I'm surprised it's only third. It's crazy. <laughs> and, and like, and so, you know, like I, I feel like Tyson Berry, unfortunately gets caught with, and I was, I was tough on Tyson Berry too. He drove me nuts. A lot Why of, not? well, a lot of like slap shots from the point that really didn't need to happen. And he was a liability. He wasn't what they needed. What they needed was TJ Brody, but Nazem Kadri didn't want to go to Calgary. So they got, yeah. they settled for Tyson Berry and Alex Kirkland. Are we allowed That's to fine. be mad at Nas for that? Yes. Because like Brody's yeah. really yeah. good. <laughs> you got traded. You stopped the trade that would have helped the franchise. and You got traded anyway. Right. And you like, stopped the franchise from advancing two years in a row because you were goof on the, on the ice. It was not, there were some, listen, do I think Nas deserved to be suspended for the rest of the series after what happened in that second one? No, but you can't but. put yourself in that position either. You did right? it. He did it to himself. He needed to get traded. We all knew it. It sucked, but we knew it. This, so, th- th- this, I, it was, I think it was the second suspension on Kadri. Um, was it the cross check to the face basically of Jake DeBrusque? Mm-hmm. And I want to say it happened. It's happened a couple times this year and it's been like a fine or a one game suspension and an army of Lee fans were like, yeah, you can't <laughs> You kicked one of our most important players out of a playoff series for that. Right. Yes. Even you, and you gave remember, him nothing. Remember yeah. last night when Corey Perry came at Matthews and Matthews got his stick up and he hit Corey Perry in the face with his stick this way. Yeah. Like that's that's the same play without force that Nas had on DeBrusque. There's a bit more force. It's, it's, a, it's a stick to the face. The intention yeah. was there by Nas. The intention is not there by Matthews. But that's just a two minute minor. And doing that with force isn't the equivalent to freaking six games. Games. Well, and and coming oh, at that from a different argument, um, game management has been a hot topic this year. Uh, tell you what, go back and watch game two from 2019 and you shove game management up your ass. What do you mean? <laughs> game management? You know how many guys should have been kicked out of that game? Steve, how many penalties should have been called to prevent that escalation? Memory. <laughs> you got to context that for us, though, buddy. I, I didn't know where you were going with the that. The Bruins <laughs> ran around all night un- unchecked. Yes. Completely unchecked. The game was nothing like the first one. Nothing. They mm-hmm. and oh, never mind. It's just gonna be full diaper 2.0. It, no, but it's they, true. they <laughs> Nas is in that series, you know they win. You know they win. A hundred percent they win. hundred yes. percent they win. Yes. Maybe five or six. I think they win five or six. Maybe. Yeah. Well they win. They, they were the won better five. team without him. They, yeah. They would have been the better team with him. Maybe. <laughs> I also think maybe. I, I think Mike right. Bat- we'll I think know. Bruce. I think Bruce Cassidy, two years in a row, outcoached Mike Babcock. Mm-hmm. I agree. Like, yeah. danced on him. It no, was what crazy. about game five, Adam? Nah. What about what a player, game best five? Best players, 17 minutes. What about, a, what, about what about a tight game five? The sort of game that the Leafs play two or three times a week now. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> I'll never get over that. Yeah. Never get over that. God, the amount of stuff I've been wrong on, duly noted. But they should have fired him the moment they lost that series. You are correct. However, knowing how and, and Jesse and I, I, I still stick to our point, Jesse. Yeah. They had to let him. They had to let him. Come you, back. You're right in hindsight, yes. but in the moment, Adam and I to. were right. So I like the beginning of the wrong. sentence better than the end. <laughs> <laughs> Have you heard about Blinkist? It is the most useful app on your phone that you haven't downloaded yet. I'm serious. This is an app that's so cool because it takes information from a book and condenses it to 15 minutes, which you can watch or listen to. And if you're like me, you live a busy, crazy life. And that's why Blinkist is so important. 
it takes away the key takeaways from any book that you need to read. One of my favorites. Um, it's a, uh, you're gonna laugh at this. Uh, it's called Everything is Fucked. And it's a book about hope. And I read it once and I didn't quite fully get the whole takeaway thing from it. Sometimes you read a book and you're like, I don't, I don't know. Anyway, I thought, okay, I'll go on my Blinkist app. I'll check it out. I read it and it gave me all the key things that I should have taken away from it. And that's what's so great about Blinkist. And you know that anybody successful will tell you, read as many books as you possibly can. And Blinkist allows you to do that. So what you want to do, we can get you unlimited access to read or listen to a massive library of condensed nonfiction books. All the books you want for a low price. Right now, for a limited time, go to Blinkist.com slash SDP and try it free for seven days and save 25% off your new subscription. That's Blinkist, spelled B-L-I-N-K-I-S-T, Blinkist.com slash SDP to start your seven-day trial. And you'll also save 25% off, but only when you sign up at Blinkist.com slash SDP. All right, now let's talk about this Palmieri Zajac trade. Um, I, okay, I know it's good for New Jersey because there's a first round pick. I know it's good for the Islanders because Lou Lamorell has been trying to reacquire Zajac since he left New Jersey. Like Zajac a couple of times almost came to Toronto. Uh, the contract was a bit of a sticking point. It was a big fat contract. And honestly, I think it would have been an anvil around the, the Leafs neck. Um, however, however, uh, still think he's a valuable addition to the Islander staff. And, you know, both of those guys are on expiring deals. Paul Mieri's the big one, though, because he's going to slot in for Anders Lee. The Islanders' benefit is obvious. What is the benefit for New Jersey here? I don't know these players as well. And I know the first round pick, but here's the thing with the first round pick this year. It's kind of a, we don't know. It's a mad, it's more of a magic beans first round than we've ever seen before. So what do we think about this? So AJ Greer, cause I saw his name and I was like, I'm trying to remember where I know that name from. So he basically has not gotten into the Islanders lineup. That's a confusing one. I'm not really sure why. He was good enough for the Avs, apparently. Um, played most of his time in the AHL, but he was good there too. So maybe he just needs um, he just needs an opportunity. And if there's anything the New Jersey Devils can provide this young man, it's an opportunity on account of uh, they're not very good. Who else was in the deal there, Adam? It was AJ Greer and who? It's so um, second rounder from 2015. And it's, guy uh, too. let me pull it up, pull it up. Yeah, there's the second rounder. Um, and then we've got, uh, let me just pull up the article. Oh my God, because... wait, sorry. B before you, <laughs> holy shit. Okay, so yeah, he was good in the AHL last year. In 10 games this year, he has one goal, one assist for two points, eight penalty minutes, and was in 10 games a minus 12? What the frig happened in those 10 games? And and what Holy about Mason? Shit. And it's Mason. I think it's Yost is how you'd spell it. But it's J O B S T. What happened in those ten games? That okay. Anyway, I, I guess Bridgeport's not doing very good. And Jobst, you said. Yeah, that's how I'm going to spell it. Mason Jobst. So undrafted, 27. Um, oh boy, sure just looks like a contract guy to me. Uh, based on it, his his picture is very nice. He has a nice smile. So I don't think he's going to do much in the, so basically, the level, but you never know. You got for two expiring veterans, a first round pick. Uh, and I think AJ Greer could be a thing and no. And Adam, you don't have to pay Zajac or Palmieri for the rest of the season, which is a big deal, which this yeah. year is a big deal. Like now, CJ, CJ, I do want to say New Jersey it. is retained on both. They retained 50% yeah. on both. Mm. You still save some. Yep. Um, what I took away from this trade is that it's a buyer's market. If you want to go out and get a guy for a half playoff run or whatever you think it's going to be, now this is the season where you just go for it because why not? It's not going to cost you. Why not? <laughs> it's not going to cost you. Any. It's not like a regular trade deadline where you're overpaying by a bajillion players. You should just go out and make the mistake and go get the guy because it's just going to be free. Yeah. Um, on... On the walk uh, that I took that uh, made me late for the show, I was listening to uh, our boy CJ on 31 Thoughts. It was mo more like Headlines, the podcast. And they, he talked about a, a couple things. One, so saving money is a big deal, even if you retain. So Taylor Hall is making something like, I think he said Eight. 70 grand a week or a day. 
or something oh, like wow. that. That's a big deal. It's a big deal for anybody, right? Even though Terry Pagula, it was announced today, he went from $5 billion to 5.4 or something like that in terms of So, yeah, worth. they're losing money somehow, the Pagulas, and yet their their net worth is like $400 million more or something like that? My, my, I'm, money's fake. <laughs> it is fake. It is. There's one thing the last year has convinced me of. It's fake. Um, so there's, there's that with Taylor Hall. The other thing with Taylor Hall, as long as we're talking about the buyer's market, is, hey, if all you can get is, for example, a second or third, do you want that attached to your resume that you were the guy who traded Taylor Hall for a third round pick? Buddy, if you don't get anything for Taylor Hall, what the hell did you have him for? What did you have him for? Wait, the only defense of the signing was it was a pick harvest. I think, Steve, you've got to send a message to the rest of the league that the Buffalo Sabres will not be ripped off in a trade. We will do something objectively stupid. To what? Like what? What are men? Like what? What is with pride? Trade him for if if all you can get on the day is a seventh. For God's sake, you get a seventh. Okay, maybe draw the line there. Maybe that's a little too far back. But you have to recoup something for Taylor Hall, or it's a failure. Mm-hmm. Do you want to be the guy who lost him for nothing? I mean, that could be attached to your name too. What the? I don't understand. I don't understand the pride right. there. I'm that sure they're going to trade sense. him. Remember, it's gamesmanship, and they have no cards. Like, the Buffalo Sabres are going to this trade deadline with no cards. Everybody knows they need to sell. Everybody knows they have players to sell. And everybody knows that there aren't a lot of buyers. Well, what cards do they have? Here's their card. You want Taylor Hall? Okay, there's one of them. Um, That's it. it. He's ours. Mm-hmm. So no, Adam. I know it's not a lot, but it's something. Okay, Steve. It's, so you you say that, mm-hmm. and I'm I'm GMX. I have a cool name, GMX. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I'm calling you, and I want yes. so to, hi GMX. I would like uh, Taylor Hall. Cool. It's a first. Uh, I don't think so. All right. What's your alternative? Uh, it's going to be a second and a middling prospect, and you're going to retain fifty percent. Well, if we're going to retain 50%, I tell you what, it's definitely not going to be a middling prospect. You're going to give me one of your top five. I'm 100%. not. Actually, I'm not because we're talking about a, uh, a player that isn't going to resign with you guys next year anyway. I know you need to offload him. So I'm going to give you a body so it looks good for you. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to give you a second round pick, well, which is pretty solid. You know what? You bring up some good points. And I'm so rude. I didn't ask for your name at the beginning of this call. What's your name? GMX. GMX, go fuck yourself. <laughs> Click. Cool. All right. It, well, and, that, and what I would say to that is, okay, then go sign, go resign Taylor Hall. Then it's not going to make. No, this, you can't say that. I've already hung up the phone. The I Sabres, told you to go fuck yourself. The Sabers are not going to get better, even if they resign him. This oh, is they're the definitely problem. no, 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 no. So this is the thing. He's not going to resign there. They can't resign him, and they're not going to get better. They have to move him. And so what, you're right, Steve, with the pride angle. But if you're another GM, and obviously I wouldn't. You know, if another GM was not going to play it that hard, you're obviously going to be respectful and cordial and blah, 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 blah. But I definitely think you got to say, listen, Kevin, here are the cards, man. What do I got to do? What I would say to Kevin, Kevin Adams is, what do we got to do to make you look good to ownership here? That's a lot nicer than how you just talked to me. Well, I know. But I'm, just, I'm doing it for entertainment. Uh, but, you know, what I would say is like, what do you need? What do you need? And let's work back from that. We'd really like to make this work. I want you to, you know, I, I'm not trying to, to, to fleece you here, but you understand the position that you're in. You're not going to make the playoffs. You're not going to resign the player. What do we need to do to make this work? And it will not include a top prospect. The, the other thing, the other thing you're missing from this conversation though, is GMX. I mean, there will also be GMY and GMZ and maybe. GMABC. No, it's Taylor Hall. There's no, maybe it's, it's Taylor Hall, Eric Stahl. You might only get X, Y, Z. Right. Okay. And I mean, there's no illusion that there's going to be a first rounder for Eric Stahl. Might mm-hmm. be good for a chuckle. I'm sure. I'm sure that was a very ah ah. So anyway, <laughs> Kevin, what what do you actually? <laughs> how do it we? Costs, uh, get, it costs Montreal like nothing to get him. It was wasn't it a third and a fifth? Like it was nothing. Yeah. No, that's pretty bad. Now. The one, the one thing I will say is Kevin Adams didn't exactly set himself up for success. Uh, awesome success. Th- this year, 
I think what would be good for him, I don't think he's going to get the first, so I should say that. Um, but he shouldn't settle for nothing. This year, I think uh, an abundance of picks is what you're after. Mm-hmm. So, um, a second and a third. Second and a third. Um, First and a third. Now we're talking. Like a second and a third, we're talking. Um, I try to it's Taylor Hall and you're getting him for playoff success. I try to staple some uh, conditional picks to that because you're talking about future, future picks that don't make you, who cares if I've won the Stanley cup, I'm going to be too drunk to care that it's, it's the Anaheim rule. I'm going to be too drunk off of champagne to care that I just gave up a first round pick. That's going to end up being Jordan Eberle someday. Yep. Would you give up Jordan Eberle if it meant winning the Stanley cup? Yes. yes. <laughs> who gives right. a shit? Like, I don't care how good this pick is. I won the cup. The uh, Dallas Stars traded Jerome Aginla, Jerome actual frigging Aginla, for Joe Newendike. Mm-hmm. They won the Stanley Cup. I would give up a Hockey Hall of Fame player to win the Stanley Cup. I, do, I, I don't care. I want to win the Stanley Cup. Ideally, I keep the Hockey Hall of Fame player and win more than one Stanley Cup. Mm-hmm. But how about I focus on winning this Stanley Cup? Right now. And, and I'll worry about the other one later. And I'll worry about the other one later. So, you know, included in that Islanders deal, um, I think there was something about playoff success and the conditional fourth turns into a third. Mm-hmm. You can negotiate something like that for Taylor Hall. Sure. Sure. And you know what? If I'm the Leafs, the one thing I don't want to give up is the prospect capital. I don't mind giving away picks, especially this year, because I just don't think you know as well as you can accurately. Um unless you're in, you know, the top 10 in the draft, I think it's going to be a lot of magic beans. So I don't really mind that first going because it's Mm -hmm. sort of, you know, obviously you never want to trade a first if you can help it, but if it's going to help you win the cup, so what? I don't think anybody's going to be mad if the Leafs give up a first rounder and Taylor Hall's coming the other way. No. Um, You know what I keep forgetting to bring up there, fellas? Are you moving off Taylor Hall? Sorry? Are you moving off Taylor Hall? No. Okay. Okay. Um, It's related. It's related. I have Um, one question after. What is it about Taylor Hall? Yes. Go for it. <laughs> so go, go, go for it. Trust, trust me on this one. Go for it. This is okay, the one right. I'm very suddenly right. Go I for it. it. I trust it. All right. It, it was just, uh, I just want to, after, after this playoff run is done, if he gets traded or he doesn't get traded or whatever, I think there needs to, this off season needs to be a referendum on Taylor Hall's career. Oh, and the damn. fact that he went from Hart Trophy winner to New Jersey selling off to Arizona to signing in Buffalo for a contract that uh, he was the last contract on the table and then being sold from Buffalo to whoever contending team picks up now and then whatever he does in this little playoff run. Like after this is all done, we need to talk about the demise or the rebound or whatever the heck's happened in the last three years to Taylor Hall. Because you don't just go from Hart Trophy to, hey, we're going to sell you for parts two years in a row. And we'll see what kind of contracts on the table this offseason because last offseason there wasn't much interest. So I just think it'll be a very interesting discussion to see how this plays out. I think you're right, Jesse. I think the contract will depend on how well he does in the playoffs. Should he get there? Unless Kevin Adams hangs on to him. Some food for thought with Taylor Hall. So he's having a a miserable season. Miserable. Uh, And he's shooting, I think it's 2.3%. Was last season also a miserable season? Now wait. (laughs) So I tweeted this. On Taylor Hall's scoring struggles, he's shooting 2.3%. His career shooting percentage is 10 Last year's was 8.1. So if you look at his past couple of years, there's been a downtick. I want to say it was like 5.5 mm-hmm. and then 8.1. It, it wasn't good. So exactly 600 players have played at least 10 games in the NHL this season. More than half, 324, have shot 8% or better. Hall is 569th out of 600 in terms of shooting percentage and only three forwards have a worse shooting percentage in the national hockey league than Taylor Hall. Basically, even are, if he's who are the forwards, do you know, uh, I would, if have you have to, to look go, it up, don't bother. That'd yeah. Be... I have to look it up. I'm okay, sorry. Okay, don't bother. Um, but it's just a sea of defensemen because they're like taking floaters from the point, not even right. necessarily trying to right. score the, you know, anyway. So basically, even if he's worse than his career shooting percentage at this point in his career, he's probably not this bad. Plus he has 17 assists on it. This part will make you gasp. Plus he has 17 assists on a team with two guys with five or more goals. <sighs> 
The Buffalo Sabres <laughs> have two players with five or more goals. Just two oh. on the whole roster. I'm going to say it one more time just in case your brain malfunctioned. The Buffalo Sabres have two guys with more than five goals. <laughs> Holy shit. They were on a five-game point streak the other night. So, I, You know what? You're absolutely right. And I think it's going to extend because they're playing Aaron Dell and the New Jersey Devils, who I've decided to be <laughs> full blown bitter against. Um, why, why are you bitter? It's just because of the Aaron Dell thing. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Um, so I don't know if your team should sell the farm for him, but he definitely help your team. By the so, way, the the Sabers in thirty eight games have eighty seven total goals. Oh wow. Okay. <laughs> Wait, okay. Math. Math. You said eighty seven goals. Correct. 87 87 goals. Matthews has scored 32% of all Buffalo Sabres Whoa. goals. <laughs> Holy shit. Wow. That's um staggering. And I think he might have done it in fewer games. Right. Yikes. Um they've also allowed 131. Holy shit. They're bad. Oh boy. That's bad. They are bad. Um they're much better with Linus Olmark who I think Still has a winning record with that team. Somehow, some way, unbelievable. They should not trade him unless they get something ridiculous. They should move heaven and earth to. At that point, I'm like, well, maybe I give up a prospect because I don't hate Jack Campbell and Linus Allmark going into next season. But I don't know how you keep Linus Allmark, right? He's I a fr- free agent, right? One of the best acquisitions the Sabers can make over the next week, I think, is re-signing Linus Allmark. Um, is he a UFA? I think he is. yes, he is. Oh. Okay. Um, oh. So here's my silly little theory. Okay. Guys, are you ready? Ready. The Buffalo Sabres should buy. Okay. Buy what? They should buy at this deadline. They should buy human beings who are under contract for the rest of this season and next, at least. Buy what? They should. Picks. You don't have any scouts anyway. Who cares? (laughs) <laughs> well, like, and they need people like they, they have some money, don't they? At least to spend on players. It, it sure looks like the Pagoulas have money if they're willing to invest. Like you obviously, if you're Kevin Adams, you have to get the Pagoulas in on this idea. You trade guys who you're not going to keep around. You see what you can get for Colin Miller. You see what you can get for Brandon Montour. You see what you can get for anybody you can extend, right? I think you should maybe look at extending some of those guys especially your RFAs. You see what's out there for Victor Olofsson. Uh, If you can't get anything for him, you extend him. But one thing that we've talked about is going forward, the Buffalo Sabres need honest to goodness, actual human beings, living, breathing humans on their roster. And like, especially with Linus Olmark, they freaking don't have any. Uh, Call up. I think Kevin Adams should call up a great way to get the conversation going around the league. Because they always talk about like, oh, you know, it's difficult being a rookie GM. You don't know all the guys. I would love to just be a fly on the wall and get Brad Treliving's reaction to Kevin Adams calling him up and asking about Johnny Gaudreau. And just, what? Like, that's, I'm listening? I just want to see where this conversation goes. You don't, you can't hang up that phone. You what want to you, know what, what he's going to say. What are you giving What are you going to give to get him? I don't know. I'm not Kevin Adams, but no, I want to the? I want to know. You just said two guys on the team have scored five goals. <laughs> Step one, you could steal under pants. Oh. Step two, question mark. Step three, profit. Profit. No. <laughs> okay. For living could come back and be like, I heard uh, Darlene is potentially available. And if you're the Sabres, you say no to nothing. Now, you should definitely keep Rasmus Dahlin. But you go, okay, I tell you what, Dahlin is available, but you're going to give me a lot more than Johnny Gaudreau. What, what are you saying? And then the, I think the Buffalo Sabres should be willing to deal their picks. Not their first. That'd be dumb. But I think they should be willing to deal their picks because they need players going forward. You need uh, – you can't have this season again next year. For the love of God – for the love of God, like you don't even necessarily have to make the playoffs, but any team that's in cap trouble next year, like why aren't the Buffalo Sabres in on Tyler Johnson, for example? Mm. And it's even, even if nothing happens, you then continue the conversation next year. You know, they should be in on Tyler Johnson. They should be in on Vince Dunn of the blues. They should be in on Johnny Gaudreau of the flames. They should be in on guys and they should be willing to deal picks to do it. 
Honestly, they should. We don't deal Taylor a guy Hall. like Dylan Cousins. That's yeah. stupid. Resign Taylor Hall. Try and make the playoffs this year. You know, just go for it. Listen, if you can resign anybody, I mean, anyone who's willing to be there. Well, damn. Sure. If you want to, sure. I wasn't going to force any of you, but since you asked, anyone who wants to be a saber, you should maybe let them. <laughs> if you're Kevin Adams, it's you know a what I mean. Very interesting strategy. Yeah, it's I don't, something you got to think different. You do, you do. Yeah, you have to. Well, <laughs> and what we keep coming up, like, what are they going to do? Trade everybody for a sixth and seventh and piddly bullshit? You don't have any scouts. You're practically following the orders of ownership by dealing all your picks. Mm-hmm. Keep your first. Keep your firsts and seconds. And then you know you're not going to be able to get anybody rounds three through seven because you haven't invested in anything. Right. Yeah. Go try, try, call up team. You know what? I'm not giving you Johnny Gaudreau, but now that you mentioned it, how about bleh? Hey, I'm not going to give you Vince Dunn, but now that you mention it, bleh. Mm-hmm. There, I think the I'd Buffalo like Sabres to see should it buy. happen. It's just so far away from the reality of how an NHL GM would operate. It's the Buffalo Sabres, goddammit. Is the Buffalo cool. Sabres. They should. I mean, maybe I'm getting a little aggressive with Johnny Gaudreau <laughs> here, but I think he's got to think outside the box. Yeah. You have an ass team, very few uh, valuable assets, an and ass no team. scouting staff. <laughs> you don't even have an assistant GM. How many phones, how many Blackberries does Kevin Adams have for this trade deadline? He's, he has, he's only unlocked one. You know? Right? Yeah. He might unlock two by the deadline the way they're playing. Uh, That's what they're playing for right now, a second right. Blackberry. He might do some of the other rewards. Like, you know, it's like, oh, scout uh, the Northwest region of the United States. Unlock one yeah. Blackberry. But he probably wouldn't do that either. You know? <laughs> so There I don't you know. go. He's adjusting the <laughs> slider on hot dog prices now that yeah. fans are allowed back in. Yeah, if you, if you up ticket prices by like 20%, you might get another phone. But I don't go. know if you will. Who knows? I think Kevin Adams should buy. He should look at it. He should look at it. And if they're under contract and it completely does not work out at all, you can sell. But and I we think should they should play try NHL to get... 08 on Twitch. Yes. I think that's I would totally. absolutely <laughs> do that. Love. I would love that. The Buffalo Sabres should buy. And There's with that, let's get to the press conference. Flowers are blooming, the grass is growing, and it's time to chop the weeds. Thanks to our sponsor, Manscaped, you can trim your holes safely and efficiently. I am talking about ball trimmers. Manscaped, the global leaders in men below the waist grooming, have an exclusive offer for our audience. Use the code SDP to get 20% off and free shipping at manscaped.com. Join the other 2 million men who trust Manscaped. They are here to make sure that you are trimmed and smelling nice. After all, it's time for that spring cleaning. Now, Manscaped, as you know, global leaders in below-the-waist grooming. We're talking about uh, things like the Crop Preserver. It's an anti-chafing, ball deodorant, and moisturizer. Very important if you're someone like me and you run hot and it's getting into the hot season. And as you know, things can happen. They get stuck places you don't want them to get stuck is what I'm trying to say. The Crop Preserver preserves the crop. Uh, You'll also like the Crop Reviver. It's a toner for that area which will keep you smelling fresh, just like spring flowers. Now, we want you to smell good this spring. Get 20% off and free shipping with the code SDP at manscaped.com. Do yourself a favor. Use the right tools for the job. Get 20% off and free shipping with the code SDP at manscaped.com. That's 20% off and free shipping with the code SDP at manscaped.com. It's spring cleaning, baby, and your balls will thank you. All right, we got a lot of fun questions. So first two things we need to note. Uh, this one's from Hockey ABI 25 on Twitter. They said Anya Packer is the new GM of the uh, oh, Metropolitan yes. Riveters. Yes. Congratulations, Anya. There you go. We got to congratulate a friend of the show. A... We we know a GM. Personally. Mm-hmm. No big deal. How about that? No big deal. MVP. Professional sports general manager. No big deal. Kind of a big deal. What's, also, what happened to your head? Are you okay? I'm okay. You You have <laughs> Kyle Dubas' phone number from like Sudbury, don't you? Do you really? Or oh, like the other day I was looking for someone named John and John Tavares popped up. There's no way it's his number. No. What? It was his I old... have, oh, 
I have a wild amount of numbers from when I cover, covered junior. And I think it's literally just like suburban households in junior towns and like call it, families. call it right now, live on the show. Call John Tavares's number. You want me to do it? See what happens. Yeah, do it. The, the Who should I say I am? Steve Dangle. Steve Dangle. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> well, yeah. What are you Who's talking all? about? <laughs> Who should I say? I mean, this, is from, this is from 2008, 2009. Yeah, it's like not going to be him. Do it. Yeah, it's that season. Him. It's from that season. It won't be him, but it'll be some random person. This will be funny. Yeah, make sure. Put, put it on, on speaker. On. Yeah, there you go. Now, wait, you guys are the radio experts. Is this illegal? No, you can no. call. Someone. You'll call and then say it's Steve and tell them we're recording yeah. a podcast. <sighs> and then tell them who their numbers used to be. Yeah, tell them you had John Tavares' po- uh, number. We're on a podcast and we want to see whose number this was. Hit hit the contest. Hit send, Steve. Come <laughs> on. The okay. number you have called is not assigned. Uh. And try to call again. Not a sign. Ah, uh, welcome to Canada, folks. Do you have Jack Campbell's number? All right. No, next? he wasn't a junior. All, All right, Steve, what's the next number? Yeah, we got to get one. What do you mean, what's the next number? Until, yeah. until we get someone on the phone, we're doing this bit. <laughs> this is, I love this. Who else you got? Uh, the next name? Uh, try this. the Dubis one. Oh. Yeah. Try it's the from Dubis. the Sioux. He, it's changed. His okay. number's changed. Maybe not. Oh, <laughs> do you I have Dubis's number? I d- Steve, no. call him and tell him you're Kevin Adams <laughs> and you want John Tavares. <laughs> <laughs> All right, pull up. No, I'm not calling the Leafs GM. Call him. It's not him. It's him. Not him. Call him. Call him. Call him. We're calling the person who has the number now. Like, Steve. come on. It's not Kyle's number. You haven't talked to him in 10 years. Jesus. It's ringing. Is this bit going the way you thought it would? I yes. want to see the voice. Now. What is it? After leaving a message, you can hang up or oh. press pound for more. Oh. That's mysterious as hell. That might be his number. You know? You should text that number and be like, sorry, it was a pocket dial, Kyle. <laughs> see how he responds. Seriously. And see if he responds back and says, no problem, Steve, or something like that. Yeah. Or, hey, this isn't Kyle. Or maybe it is, you know. Sorry. All right. What's the next? What's the next number? No, he's he's sending it. But make sure you address him as Kyle. So they have a way to refute that. (laughs) (laughs) By the way, I assigned a photo for his content. (laughs) It's him him showing Lou Lamorello his phone. (laughs) I don't think that's him. Anyway. What? Well, how did this start? Next Who else number. do we have? Yeah. What do you mean next number? Do you have an active, you you have an active NHL you player? You gotta give me names. Not, not, an, not a, well, like an active NHL player that you would have the phone number from when they were in junior. Right. I mean, there's Everly. It's called yeah, call Everly. What's that? What would Everly be doing right now? You know? Well, he's definitely not definitely doesn't have a Southern Ontario phone number. Where you are calling is unavailable no. at the moment. No, all right, I just have a bunch of this number doesn't exist. Well, you've only anymore. tried three. What do we need another one? <laughs> Jesus. One more. Junior mm. player you covered. Junior player I covered. Somebody on the Knights? Do you have, do you have Nazems? Uh, I do. Didn't I just try Naz? I thought I just tried. No, it. we no, did Tavares. Oh no, I didn't. No, I was about to try him. All right, I'll try now. All right, let's do Nas. Okay, last one. All right, this is the last one. All right. You have reached the voicemail box of. 
Oh. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> Man, she has no idea. She used to have she had Kad, Kadri's number. That's cool. That was yeah. worth it. <laughs> this that was oh. terrifying. Hey. All that entire process. I never want to play that game again. See, I hated that. We're gonna play that game again again next show. And no. what we're gonna do is we're gonna, you know what? Each show, I need you to dig up an old player's number and we're gonna do it. I literally have like a hundred. I perfect. Then I guess we got a whole year's worth of episodes of it. We're gonna do one a show. I hate this. <laughs> I hate this. It's that one of, that might have been the, one of my most favorite things we've ever done. That was fun. <laughs> Just listening to ringtones? Yeah. It was fun. Oh my God. The tension. Ooh. <laughs> By the way, I, I do want to throw this out there in the comments. I think the Dubus one's real. I don't know. You think the Dubus one's real? real? I think it's um, real. I think he would have picked up if it was real. Um, I, I do want to throw this out there. <laughs> and I'm going a bit rogue here. Steve, Jesse, you can be mad at me afterwards for this, okay? I just want to float the idea of how would you feel about extra podcast content throughout the week? Would like to know what you think about extra podcast content throughout the week from the three of us. Like, just leave it in the comment section. Hmm? Like one week? No, like every week. So we got our two shows. So we do two shows. What if you're meaning more? More than two. Oh, it's crazy. What if we did six shows a week? Yeah. We can't do that. Is that what you're saying? No, no we're doing six. we're having a show every no. single day. And Sunday. Seven all right, so more than week. two, less than six. If Let's we... hear what old Sheldon's gotta say about our show. Adam, when Let's we see. come Let's out with this announcement. Gotta say. When we <laughs> come out with this announcement, if it's not seven days a week, you better be disappointed. You better. That's the, we've, we're setting the expectation now. You're going to have a new podcast every morning at 6 a.m. when you wake up. And if it's That's not right. that, you better get mad. And Steve's recording it at 2 a.m. after he's done the LFR, which, by yep. the way, I think wasn't even up till 1 today. <sighs> it was Tell not. What it. a jerk. Tell me about no, it. No, I do jerk. this. I Sorry, the reason the videos have been going up afternoon, I do this terrible thing where I be a father to my son. <laughs> And I play with them in the morning. I know it's, it's awful. I'm sorry, guys. Terrible. God, uh, Steve. Don't you know, hmm. Steve? So our second uh, question. You said that. Our second question also came from Hockey ABI, who gave us uh, the heads up that today is actually National Zoo Lovers Day. Oh, Steve. Oh, so are you guys gonna quit the show, or <laughs> no. I'll just do the rest? But there of was it? a great zoo question online. A few of them, like really Were good. They? Yeah, Who's can that? I can I ask one of the ones yeah, I saw? Yeah, let's okay, let's do Steve zoo, zoo stories. No, it's called Z, Steve's Zoo stories. Z, Steve's Zoo stories. S Z S. It rolls off the tongue. <laughs> Every everyone <laughs> sent me featured on a song that's... with Maroon Five. Uh, that, let's what? okay, that's SZA. Anyway, huh? uh, <laughs> oh. <laughs> everyone anyway. sent me the video of that uh, like monitor lizard crawling through the convenience store somewhere. That was friggin' terrifying. Yeah, yeah. yeah. how the hell does one of those sneak in? Floor. I don't know. A bunch of people are like, oh my god, after hearing what you said about the Komodo dragons, I'm like, I don't think it's a Komodo dragon, is it? I don't know. I don't know. All right, Adam, ask the Steve Zoo stories question. Steve, somebody asked when Jesse pointed that out, uh, what animal at the zoo has the worst poo? Um, mammal, I think it's got to be rhinoceros. <laughs> okay, um, why? <laughs> it's just real big. It's real big is and it real like, smelly. Is it like that scene in Jurassic Park where they're just playing with the Triceratops' poo and they're trying to figure out what's yeah, wrong with it? Why? That's a big pile of shit. No, yeah. yeah it's So they're, they have an outdoor enclosure, but they also have an indoor one. And, and they, like, they don't, they're not just trapped in there all day. Um, I don't know why they use the indoor part, but generally they're outside. The indoor enclosure for the rhinos is one of the strongest smells in North America. Like it is, that is something else. The elephant's poop is just, it's enormous. It's frigging enormous. One of the hardest I've ever seen a group of people laugh, by the way. I was doing a zoo mobile tour. This is back when the Toronto Zoo still had elephants. And I'm talking about the elephants. I'm talking about them, talking about them. And no one heard a word I said, because the elephant, elephants pee like a waterfall. Like a shower. 
yeah, it's not a stream. It's the water falls out of them <laughs> in like this enormous water spout of fluid and it lasts for an impossible amount of time. <laughs> and, and there are kids on board. It's the one thing that kids and moms and dads and everyone of all ages just laughs hysterically at. And just when everyone is taking a breath as the pee wraps up, just a Dragon Ball Z spirit bomb right into the puddle. And it, the people, it was five minutes before I got another word out that people heard. Like okay. people were just laughing so hard. I don't but, like this. So hold on. Why? So you, you asked the question. No, I did. I, I did. Didn't. I did. I did. I so, did. Okay, okay, okay. So Steve, so, so we know we know the mammal that that has the worst poop. Let's talk about the reptile. I mean, just all of them. Like, because they eat meat. So it's generally the bigger the reptile. It's just meat the, and they digest it with a reptilian digestive system. What's the biggest reptile at the zoo? Uh, the Komodo dragon's pretty big. Are there gators? Are there... We had a dinosaur exhibit. <laughs> they were robotic. Um, oh, I, God. Are there crocodiles? I can't remember. Do we did Jesse? I had lots of robot dinosaur jokes for the Zoomobile ride. Got to remember, I'm talking to children. Um, Give me another one. <laughs> Give me another robot dinosaur joke. No, I don't remember them. Um, yeah, I'm. I'm just gonna say rhino. Rhino. I don't yeah. remember a lot of them. Spe- I thought that was specific. a funny question. I was like, man, that is you got to You got to work there to know that. Like no yeah. one else I'll, know that. I'll tell you the poop I was most afraid of was raccoons um, because they would get they would get into everything, and like uh, you know, one time a raccoon got into where we kept the strollers, and that's probably how part of how I ruined my back stacking those friggin' strollers. Uh, wrong, by the way, um, but he got into the place where we keep them. And he took a dump and I'm like, dude, I don't even, I don't want to clean this. Cause raccoon poop is like, isn't it toxic? I don't know. It's don't super, know. it's, I mean, not that poo is good for you, but it's ridiculously bad for you. You eat in there folks. It's ridiculously bad for you. You can get worms from it. And I didn't, I didn't want anything to do with it. I didn't want to touch it. Well, fair enough. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Jesse, one more question. We got time. So yes, I used to clean shit. That's the first question I always got asked is do you shovel shit at the zoo? Steve. I mean, no, not every day, but on occasion, yeah. I, I do. I'm sorry, I want to just throw some news out there. Uh, David Savard will be a healthy scratch tonight for the Columbus Blue Jackets. Oh! Uh, Steve, quick uh, quick yes or no on this one, then I got one more. Will you be working the trade deadline? That's from Nicholas Egan. Uh, yeah. I don't think I'm going to be there. No one's asked me to be there. Um, so I'm pretty sure I'll just be on... Basically, stand by to react to trades. Um, working with uh, Produce Drew there. Okay. Just making videos from so, house, like a factory, and sending them home. Awesome, awesome. So, o- online mainly, not on the TV coverage. Pretty sure, unless they have me make a video that that ends up on their TV coverage. I tried to hold that burp in, I'm sorry. Um, unless they have a video that shows up, um, like a pre-recorded one. Mm-hmm. Uh, as far as I know, there's no plans. Awesome. Sorry if you can hear that. There's work going on outside. That's okay. I can hear that now, but it's we okay. Can, it's Last okay. question from Steven Scheller. Uh, do you nickname your starter Pokemon or do you leave them as Charmander or Squirtle or whatever your starter choice is? So I am of the belief that you don't nickname your Pokemon. I always thought it was ridiculous that people be like, oh, my Pokemon's name is Pencil or whatever it'd be. I think you just leave it as the Pokemon's name. What do you guys do? Pencil. Uh pretty sure when i was much younger i gave them all terribly inappropriate names <laughs> um but yeah no generally you just leave it right yeah, i was too that's lazy. the move right you just leave yeah. like leave. this this thing is called charmander this thing's called pikachu i don't yeah. need to give it a name who didn't name gary fuck <laughs> every kid was, was it, no, i love professor gary. oaks like oh what's his name oh fuck that's right <laughs> <laughs> didn't name Gary fuck I left uh, Gary as Gary because I I wanted to pretend like I was in the TV show I was like that was the imagination part for me so I left it as Gary right well and my dad's name's Gary so like oh. one time I named him dad and it's just really funny <laughs> what I thought watching Professor Oak refer to him as dad was very dad. funny <laughs> by the way is the in the Pokemon blue and red version is the Snorlax um, the Snorlax uh, a storyline 
whatever you want to quest. We got to get it off the bridge. The most yeah, annoying get- part of that game. Yes. Yeah, because you get there and you're it. like, oh, where's the Poke Flute again? I got to yeah. go get the Poke Flute. And, well, and then I got to beat it. It yeah. doesn't give you any hints either. It's not like, oh, you might need the Poke Flute. It's like, oh, I don't know how it's going to wake up. I'm like, I'm fucking 10. I don't know what this is. Right, that drove me nuts. I'm like, what if I was nine? Yeah. What if I was younger than I currently or I am? I didn't buy the Nintendo Power, which was the magazine that told me how to do yeah. it. The first time I played Pokemon, I think it was blue. I didn't know that you had to get the items for the bike. And when I got to that city where you got to ride the bike everywhere, I didn't have a bike. And I had to ex- I had to start a whole new game because I looked, <laughs> I think I one of my friends told me I looked up online that you need to get the bike first and then do the bike stuff. And I just deleted my game and started over because I didn't know you needed a bike and I got stuck. <laughs> I was freaking eight Dude. years old. Oh. My buddy who I know listens to the show. So Matt, you're going to listen to this damn story. First time I played stick of truth, he came over and he's like, can I play that for a little bit? And I'm like, sure, because I'm a good friend. And he saved bastard. I had to restart the entire game because he saved oh. on my progress. Oh. And I pretended to be less mad than I really was <laughs> because that game was all I had going on for me at the moment. God, I remember, remember those. Remember those were that simpler era? times. That was a <laughs> Do you remember good, that era where Steve <laughs> would be like, you know, I just got done playing thirteen hours of Stick of Truth. <laughs> my eyes are bleeding. <laughs> oh then he'd show God. up to the podcast. I didn't have any time to prep, boys. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, sorry. I, you understand the underpants gnomes that you gotta you gotta beat them twice. First, you beat them regular size, and then they shrink you, and then they're more difficult to beat. And you understand, right, guys? Steve. Anyway, how's your show? Steve, you played the shit out of that game. You did. Like... I, played, I played that. I I got I got stupidly good at NHL that year as well. You were very good. Yeah. And then again this past spring. Oh, my God, by the way. I was <laughs> ranting I about going NHL 21. Sorry, I just remembered. Hear me. I was like, let's hear it. I was like, I can't play this frigging game. What happened to the passing mechanic in this game? It's unplayable. My pass assist was at zero the oh. entire time, and I didn't know. Oh. That's yeah. And weirdly, the game became way more playable when I turned it on. <laughs> Fuck. <sucks. laughs> so mad. as a 33-year-old man. Very upset that I didn't have pass assist or not. Incredible, incredible. Well, listen, uh, thanks so much for listening to the show. We will be back on Monday. Now, Monday's show is going to be a bit interesting and a, a little bit later, obviously, because we've got a situation with the trade deadline. So uh, we will probably start recording around, I would think, 5 o'clock? Uh, 30? Yeah. Somewhere in there, 5, 4, 30. When all, when all the action is done. You know? yeah. yeah. Um, And Steve will have a few videos to do for Sportsnet, uh, and then maybe he'll make time for Jesse and I if he doesn't have to go on a walk with Iggy. Um, and then, uh, so we should have an episode (laughs) and then we should have an episode coming out that night, uh, just kind of breaking things down. Um, and then, you know, like guys, we're as of next week, like, you know, 14, 15 games away from the playoffs. Pretty cool. Very exciting. Mm -hmm. Um, and, uh, you know, it's, it's honestly, this is the most fun. I know this sounds weird. It's the most fun I've had watching and just enjoying a season in two, probably two years, two, three years. I mean, the Leafs are the Leafs basically every night. They're good. Win or lose. Yeah. It's, it's but it's not wild. just the Leafs. It's just the, there. you know, like, you know what there is, the, the, what's missing that, that made things what? suck? The Nylander deal. And then the Matthews deal. And then Darren Ferris for eight months. You know, you get tired of this And then shit. Babcock. Oh, and then Babs. Like, it was yeah. just, ugh. Like, they got their, their shit together. It was nice. So, anyway... Uh, been a lot of okay. fun. It was exhausting. Good. It was. Yes. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. So it wasn't just me. Oh, yes. it sucked. No. That was the fucking Nylander terrible. Thinks, as soon as Tavares signed, that was the end of the super fun time. Because then it was like, well, Nylander, what about Nylander? Are we going to talk about Nylander. Is Nylander signed? The, the off season of Mitch wasn't fun. Oh, it's because it, it coming to an end at training camp. You're like, okay, what the fuck did I do that two months of stressing for? Yeah. You know, yeah. that was not. Well, I think they both, both sides would tell you that too. They're probably like, why did we do this? And it was Mitch Marner that was like, okay, I'm going to make a phone call now. And we're going to start start the conversation. Yeah. Does Darren Ferris do stuff? Question. Oh, and we'll leave you with that. I don't know. Anyway, we now go to Taylor Hall. It. Here, I'll call Taylor. I'll, <laughs> here, let's ask him. Let's, <laughs> Taylor Hall could have a multi-year deal somewhere else. Hmm. Anyway, uh, let's uh, let's wrap it up, guys. We will see you Monday. Enjoying. Looking forward to it. Steve, 
Enjoy your time on Tim and Friends tomorrow mm -hmm. after 5 o'clock, between 5 and 7, Eastern Standard Time on Sportsnet. And, of course, Sportsnet and TSN have their trade deadline specials uh, next week. And because we Hope are Sportsnet. equal parts, Rogers and Bell here. In fact, we're more Bell than we are Rogers. Yep. Um, I'm going to be bringing Adam on Jesse and Friends tomorrow at 5 p.m. Eastern, mm. so watch that instead. Yep. All right, Tim and Friends, but with hair. Like, get out of here. <laughs> The Steve Dangle Podcast. Follow the guys on Twitter at Steve underscore Dangle, at Adam W-Y-L-D-E, and at Jesse Blake. Connection complete. Wow.